Tedeschi Wealth Management Advisor at Perspective Wealth Planning with this week's market breakdown video. We're going to take a look at the four major U.S. indexes. We're going to pay special attention to the U.S. dollar. That's actually where we will start today. We're going to jump in and also take a look at commodities. And then we have some very interesting sentiment data to look at, specifically paying attention to short interest and taking a look at where we are now versus where we are historically and what that could mean for us moving forward. So let's start here with the U.S. dollar. We have been watching this for a while. We have been talking about it trapped kind of between that 89 and 91 level. Well, over the last couple of days, we actually have pushed our ways back up above this. Now, what I will say, when we are paying attention to a market, we are focusing on whether it is in an uptrend, a downtrend, or it's moving sideways. A downtrend means it has lower highs, which this certainly has, as well as lower lows. This downtrend does not change until we make a higher high. So that would mean we'd need to get all the way back up here and take this zone out back up over that 94, 95 to completely kind of put a, a potential bottom in and negate this downtrend. That hasn't happened yet. And really what we can look at is there is a major zone of resistance that was support from the middle of last year that we broke underneath. We very simply at this point in time could have a breakdown back test where we see a failure and a continued move to the downside. However, what we're now really watching is can we get back up over 95 and how do we negotiate this 92 to 93 zone? If this is going to continue its downward move, we would most likely see a failure inside this zone. So. I think, and I've been saying it for a while, what happens here with the U.S. dollar is very important, and we're going to continue to keep you apprised of what's going on over there weekly. Now, let's take a look in here at the S&P 500. Now, last week, we had some what felt like ugly selling, but all we did was kind of pull back down into a level of potential support. This zone right in here from about 3,700 down to about 3,650 is minor support, and then that major support comes back in around that 3,600 level. Right? We have not broken down. And if we talk about uptrends versus downtrends, we remember higher highs and higher lows are what we are looking for. Right now, this low is still higher than this last low. Therefore, that uptrend has not been negated here in the overall market. So now we're watching to see if we can go ahead and put in a new all-time high. But that sell-off uh, last week held exactly where it needed to, turned around, and subsequently has reversed. We need to make that new high, and the NASDAQ almost did it yesterday, just barely missed, as you can see right there, and then kind of finished a little bit off of the highs of the day. Um, it, too, still in an uptrend, as you guys can clearly see, higher highs and higher lows, right? So even though we had this sell-off, it did not take out this low right here. So therefore, that uptrend's still in play. We're now watching to see if we can break above that all-time high zone. The Russell, <laughs> this clearly isn't an uptrend, right? Low, higher low, now we have that higher low, and we have a bunch of higher highs in as well. It's been, again, one of the strongest indexes that we have seen uh, <clears throat> over the last couple of months, right? After years of weakness, it came out of the gate really, really strong here. We're watching that to see if it can make a new high over that kind of 2200 zone as well, but it held where it needed to also. And then when we come in here and we take a look at the Dow, the Dow actually put in a, this same low here. This and this are actually the same. So it didn't put it a higher low, but it didn't actually break below it. Um, the Dow is now more trading in a sideways range more than an upward range here over the last couple of months like the rest of the indexes. So that's something that is worth paying attention to there as well. But overall, you have all four of the, the major indexes up near those all-time highs. The sell-off was bought right at a level where it needed to be bought and subsequently turned back up. Now, let's take a look at some of the commodities. Let's take a look in at oil. Oil continues its move higher. We had that breakout, and if you guys remember, the, la the next level that I really talked about us needing to pay attention to was at 55. We broke above that, and the next one really comes in at about that 65, if we're paying attention over the last few years. All right, so that is what we are looking at there. Um, for oil, nice continuation here this week from that potential bull flag continues to just move higher yes we have resistances over in the left but we have made a beautiful uptrend here over the last five months um, and that certainly has continued
We take a look in at copper here. Copper is, and I'm going to pull this chart back out just a little bit further so that you guys can see the, uh, the monthly chart so we can see those bigger levels. That major resistance point here going all the way back to 2012 is that 380 zone. It's where we've come up. And we're kind of just basing around here. This was an incredible push higher. A move sideways for a while before we get our next directional move, whether it be up or down, is certainly um, it would be normal price action. So we're going to watch for this to kind of trade sideways here for a little bit longer and see if we can get that potential breakout. Now, gold, I'm going to clear all these uh, drawings out here for gold and take a look at that big picture. That major level 1780 still is holding. Um, and remember, support is not a number. It's kind of a zone, and that zone kind of goes all the way up to about that 1830 level. Gold had an incredible move higher. Um, there is nothing wrong with the long-term trend here. Right? We have a potential wedge that's set up over the last couple of months. But if we look at the long term, we still have higher lows that are put in and higher highs that are still put in on this chart, right? For this to be negated, we really need to take out this area right in here to the downside, and then that would change the scope of the chart. Right now, and I'll zoom back in on a daily basis, right? It's still holding that zone that it has fallen into a few times over the last six months, but has bounced out of every single time, right? If we don't make that bounce back out of this area, that would change kind of what I think about this area. Silver made a new high this week off of that squeeze, has fallen right back down. The key short-term level is the one that we've talked about a lot, and that is 26. You can see all of the price action that we've had in at that 26 zone here, here, all the way back in here as well, and now we're testing it from the uh, top side. Bulls really want to see that 26 zone hold. If it doesn't, we do have major support back at that 22, 23 level in there on silver. Last thing I'll take a look at, not a commodity, but the emerging markets. We like to take a look at that every single week as well, right? Continuing to act extremely strong. This was that breakout, pulled back. And if you notice, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. It pulled back and did not break below that gap from that gap up there off. Um, and so that's really, really important. Again, if we're looking at this just from a trending perspective, we have higher lows. We have higher highs so we still are in an uptrend here this area looks really really good as well now with the smart money dumb money confidence indicator that we'd like to take a look at the dip that we had last week we saw that dumb money kind of fall back down but it immediately turned back up again smart money did the opposite there this continues to widen where we are smart money at about a 20% confidence level, dumb money up around that 85%. This is, again, about as stretched as this chart gets, okay? Um, at some point in time, these will come back together. And remember, it doesn't mean that this has to happen now. It's just a sign that we have extremely high sentiment out of retail traders and extremely low sentiment out of those professional money managers. And eventually, the, the money managers end up being right and the, the retail traders end up being wrong. Historically, that is what has occurred. So let's take a look now at um, some short interest and how this compares over the last uh, 20, 50 years and what this could mean for us moving forward. We're taking a look at a 17-year low in short interest where we're looking at the S&P 500, the Dow, the NASDAQ, the Russell. The total share interest percentage of float for those indexes is right around that 2% mark, which you got to go back again 17 years to see a similar number. So very, very little short interest as markets get higher. Now, that makes logical sense, but at some point, right it becomes a problem the reason is is when everybody is short the market tends to stop falling right um when everybody is buying lots and lots of puts the market doesn't tend to collapse because who is buying tons of insurance before the flood happens it's not usually how it works right usually nobody has the insurance and something comes out of left field and that's when markets come back so the fact that we have such a low short interest of of course is a bit of a concern for us this has been a continual decrease over the last decade but again it's one of those things it doesn't matter until it matters now, when we take a total look at the New York Stock Exchange short interest detrend, and what I mean by detrend, it is um, over the course of time trends um, 
show up. And if you're trying to compare data from 50 years ago with data today, you want to try to remove those trends. So this actually takes a look at the data and then average it over the course of five years to try to remove that essentially noise um, inside the data footprint. Um, and what this shows us is, you know, we are at very much historical low short interest. This chart goes back all the way to the 1950s here, as you can see. And we are in that lowest zone that we're at historically ever, um, you know, of course, of the last uh, 70, 80 years. Now, here's where we need to be careful. This is all, we've only been this low a couple of times in history, so we don't have a lot of data points to look at. So we don't necessarily want to place a ton of weight on this. We definitely want to pay attention to this. When we have had short interest this low in that detrended environment um, to try to make things equal across time frames for us, right? Look where we're at nine months and a year later. Nine months, the, the market was negative 100% of the time with an average pullback of 10%. A year later, it was only positive 50% of the time with a couple, one good gain, two, two losses, and one essentially flat, right? Two years, three years later, just didn't matter. Um, you know, we had 100% gain at that point in time. So what this means is, again, and this makes sense, Right? If we don't have any short protection, we don't have a lot of short interest, something comes out of less field, drives uh, prices of stocks down, people then start piling in on the short side after things have kind of moved in that direction. And what we then have is we have a, a market environment where now everybody has insurance. So, of course, the flood subsequently isn't likely to come. Um, so, that could be why we have data that looks like this. Now, if we expand that to greater than 10% instead of that 12, uh, we get a, a larger data set. And again, look at what happens nine months later. We have a very high negative percentage of the time. And one year later, uh, it's, it's um, you know still above 50-50. So it looks like for the most part, six to nine months is that difficult cycle inside of um, you know when we have this kind of short interest. It's out there in the market, and then subsequently, you know, we continue to head higher historically. So again, there's not a ton of data points here, um, so it is something that we we need to keep in the back of our mind. But we don't need to place a ton of weight on. But again, when we take a look at all of these different data points week after week, there are a lot of there are a lot of reasons in the back of our head at this point in time to be a little bit concerned. The next thing I'm going to talk about is companies that are losing money, and this to me is the most concerning. We are nearing a decade high in companies that are losing money. Typically, when we see these types of numbers, we're deep in the throes of a recession, right? It's kind of the bottom of the market. It's kind of the bottom of the market of 2008, 2009. We never got that kind of correction, prolonged correction with companies losing money. And this really did start really because of the pandemic. So the question, of course, becomes... Um, is that it? Are we fine? Is this going to turn back lower? And when it does turn back lower, that typically does send stocks much higher as companies go from losing money to making money. Um, so if we don't get that double dip recession, so to speak, and we did get that V-shaped rally, this might actually be a very bullish sign for us um, moving forward. The other thing in that same vein is on the IPOs. The amount of IPOs that, are, that have negative EPS is like 80% at this point in time. And it's uh, right at that same level we were right at the height of the dot-com bubble. This is concerning to me um, because it shows kind of a, a frenzy of risk-taking. It doesn't matter if the company's losing money. Cool, we'll still put our, our – um, uh, we'll buy that IPO. We'll put money into it. That usually has not led to good things in the past. And this is a trend that did not just start last year because of the coronavirus. This has been something that has been continuing since 2010. So the real question here is, is this because money is cheap? We continue to print more money. Will this matter in the same way that it mattered in the past? Or is this one of those, another one of those signs to put in our, in our back pocket of we need to be concerned because we have a level of speculation that we last saw back in 1999 and that subsequently didn't end well. So, guys, the reason I take a look at all this data in these videos for you is I want to present that bigger picture. 
At the end of the day, what we're really paying attention to is what the overall indexes themselves are telling us. Market strong, it's up near those all-time highs, right? And so we need to continue to be, um, you know, looking for that trend to continue. However, in the back of our mind, we need to understand what's going on underneath the surface because if this starts to turn down, we need to think about what that could ultimately mean, how far that could ultimately go, and what historically has happened when we've had similar sentiment readings in the past. But at the end of the day, the chart trumps all. We're going to pay the most attention to that. As always, I hope you guys have yourself a fantastic week. If you want to reach out to me, uh, you can do so directly at mtedeschi at perspectivewealthplay.com. You can give me a call at 814-580-9881. Love to talk anything about the markets with you guys. I uh, will see you next week. Take care.